Hello and welcome to High Caliber TV, your source for figure and model updates every Wednesday and Friday. So today on the workbench I'm doing another plug steer wood update and I'm going to start off by talking about the gap filling for sling attachments. Now I talked about this in the OIF tanker from Alpine but I want to reiterate some of the things since I'm having a, I don't know if you can tell, a bit of a bit of conflict, internal personal conflict with this current step and I just want to talk about what has gone wrong and what's gone right. So before I get into that I want to show the exact point. As you can see the sling, the resin part that's cast onto the figure ends and then if you look here there's a gap between my two fingers there and a smaller gap here. Now I measured it and the top gap is around four millimeters, the bottom gap is one and a half, one millimeter. So they're quite, they're quite short gaps and the sling itself is basically exactly, or it is exactly one millimeter. So that makes our job really easy since the measurements are quite precise and they're round. You know, you can, you can measure those off with a ruler. What I use and this is one of the things I wanted to mention. I use a really, really basic ruler, but the thing I wanted to point out is that the edge on it's metal. And this is really helpful when you're bending photo etch. You can brace this on the photo etch. In this instance, I'm using the metal part as a, well, a straight edge that I guide the knife blade along. And I have just a standard hobby knife with a fresh blade in it and as you can see I tried to bend and score the metal rather than marking it out and cutting it like this and now since the total length of the metal only comes to five millimeters I took a small chunk as you can see here it's still hanging on and I'll be cutting that up accordingly and applying that. There's no other sling stuff on this diorama base. The base itself comes with a Lee Enfield and some other stuff that you could potentially put sling attachments on. The base and the figures both come with photo etch frets that have buckles and slings and stuff like that in them. So rather than use those, I opted to just go with uh, slightly more malleable metal foil, lead foil that I find works far better and it's easier to work with unless you try and do it the hard way like I just did and bend it and score it. So basically what I, the short answer that I'm trying to arrive at is that it works a lot better if you use the back of the blade to score it and then rather than try and bend it clear you just take the hard edge of your straight edge and cut it away. So stay tuned and I'll start painting these guys up. So here's the base after the initial coat with the airbrush. What I did was I turned down the PSI on my compressor. Usually I have it hover around 1920. Now it's at 14 to 15. And what I did was I took the mix of paint, had a lot less pigment and a lot more of the thinner that I use, which is isopropyl alcohol mixed with water and just used a lot more passes but since the paint was thinner it gave it a really harmonizing look to it and if you recall from the last video it looked sort of like uh, the hand painted look looked like like baby's first uh, coloring book sort of thing where none of the lines were straight and it looked really sort of hammed up and you can still see like the the splits in the bags you can still see uh, where the blacks poking through but of course this is just the first thin coat and it's nowhere near finished really at this point so let me just show you the colors really quick and if you've been keeping tabs on the colors that I use I use a lot of the same colors over and over again with I found with military modeling you can get away with using a lot of the same colors if you just sort of get into the habit of mixing them appropriately and this one's new to my collection so I wanted to use it on this project more than 
have it actually be relevant, but it turned out quite well. So it was two drops of this, one drop of this, and one drop of this into a cup with, I would say, equal parts of the thinner to paint. And like I said, just really patiently, a lot of passes, but very careful passes and very sort of gentle PSI going through the gun. So stick around, I'm going to show you the next steps. So here's the base. The sandbags are essentially done other than the final weathering and all the oil rendering and things like that. But the airbrushing steps are done now. And there is a, a variation on the sandbags. It's probably not that easy to tell with the camera and the way the light is. But especially in here, there's a, a difference with the colors. When I applied the final highlight, I was sure to be a bit more precise and a bit more, more detail oriented rather than just applying an overall sort of a whitewash coat of highlights to the base. So follow us on Facebook, Pinterest and Twitter for daily stock updates and more stuff from the workbench. Check us out at highcaliberminiatures.com. Links in the description as always. Our new site's going to be up any day now, basically. And I'm really, really excited. There's going to be a lot of new stuff coming out. Not just with the launch of this new site, but in the coming weeks and even the coming months, we've got so much stuff in the mail now and just like a lot of stuff. It's coming in the pipe. And so thanks very much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.